Hey students, Eric Magidson here. So my computer has a high DPI dots per inch monitor and Blackboard just doesn't like anything over 1024 by 768. Now, if that's foreign terms to you, don't worry. Actually, after this class, it won't be. But I'm basically going to start through lesson one, module one, lesson one. You can pause this at any point. Uh, you can read through this. Uh, you know, if you have any information, but you'll get the idea. I don't tend to stop and go through the objectives because I cover the objectives throughout the lecture. Words to know. I would definitely pause here. Get familiar with these words. You'll understand more of them as we go through the lecture. Okay. Uh, now, normally, like I said, because this is an in-person class, we'll be doing this in class. You'll have the oppor uh, opportunity to stop me. Please do. Please ask questions in class. It, it really does make it more fun to teach and certainly helps you all learn the material better. So you can pause again, look at these terms, and <laughs> we'll jump in. So computers, well, this goes with, it's like starting out with Captain Obvious. Computers are everywhere. No, really? Wow, I'm surrounded by computers right now. I've got one, two, three uh, looking around four computers just in this room doing different things. You know, one is a wireless router. Well, that's actually a computing device. It's processing uh, data packets that are being sent over the internet. My computer's uh, storing this presentation on the solid state so that I can then upload it to YouTube. For example, my smartphone's in front of me. We're going to use my smartphone in just a minute. So, um, Computers are used, you know, in your cell phone, ATMs, home thermostat. Great example. I just bought uh, one of the Google Nest. So if you're not familiar with that, we'll just go out, take a quick peek here. <laughs> so Nest is a home thermostat. There's, it, it's web enabled. So I can actually, this is their cam. Here's the Nest right here. I can actually schedule it. I can change it from... You could watch this video if you wanted to. I can schedule when it's supposed to heat the house, when it's not. A great example is uh, we went on vacation recently. We didn't need the house to be heating to the normal schedule, but we were already gone. I was actually in Hawaii, and I went, oh, man, I forgot to change that down to the Echo. So I just logged on my smartphone and changed the schedule down to the Echo, which keeps the house heated at a minimum temperature that I chose. Cool thing is at the end of the month, I get a report, uh, you know, how we used electricity um, or how we used the, the thermostat to heat the house, how that compared to last year, last month, etc. So that's where I get the data that gets transformed into information. And we'll talk more about that later. Cars cruise control. All of our cars now have many computers in them. I also, uh, as we start each each class, I like to introduce sort of a piece of technology that may be interesting. One of the pieces that I'm going to show you are drones, uh, consumer-based drones. There's one on the market now called the DJI Mavic. It has 27 processors in it that allow it to fly and record 4K quality video. Just amazing stuff that we're doing. You can also find technology in things like your refrigerator today. So... Central role, worldwide communications, entertainment. You know, the kids no longer are sitting down to watch TV. They're on their smartphones. They're streaming Netflix, for example. Education, well, what we're doing right now is a great example. You know, just a decade ago, was it really possible for you to be sitting anywhere? I don't know. Maybe right now you're sitting waiting for your kids at their, you know, dance practice or sports practice. You're on your smartphone and you're watching this, consuming this through YouTube, for example. Commerce, we'll definitely talk more about commerce, how it's affected not only from a country standpoint, but worldwide. You know, changes in economic conditions of one country instantly can affect the economic conditions or, or the markets, the worldwide markets versus just the national markets of independent countries and other business activities. I'll introduce you to some companies who have leveraged technology to go from, you know, multi, 
you know, hundred thousand dollar businesses to billion dollar businesses with the use of technology. Now, most people don't realize computers have been around since about the 1940s. Um, you know, used militarily, you know, breaking code, etc. cetera. Uh, massive special purpose machines, you know, like Univac and ENIAC, um, used by the military and the government. So when we talk about networking, we're going to see that that actually started out as a government project that then proceeded to get privatized. They saw the value of networking and the internet. We'll talk about the difference, by the way, between the internet and World Wide Web. Those are actually two completely different things. You may not know that, but by the end of this class, you will. Now, let me just let you all know, a lot of people come into this class with the idea, hey, I've been using a computer forever. I grew up with them, perhaps. I know everything there is to know. I guarantee if you come in here with a closed mind, you're not going to learn much. If you come with an open mind, I'm going to provide a lot of value for you. You're going to understand more about computing, more about its impact on you, your society, the world as a whole, um, and definitely things like application software. I'm going to show you some tricks on how to better use Microsoft Word. Did you all know you can create a complete bibliography? As long as you're citing your material correctly, with three clicks, you can get a bibliography out of Microsoft Word. If you've ever typed a bibliography, three clicks sounds like a lot easier than typing a full bibliography. I'm going to show you that in Module 2. So let's get back to here. It took hours to complete a calculation that now it takes milliseconds to complete on your smartphone. It used to take up city blocks. And now you hold that, you hold more processing power in your smartphone today than the Univac had. And of course, your smartphone costs less than any of the one component of a component that made up the Univac. You know, future promises innovations, wearable computers. Well, that's not the future. Um, I'm looking at my daughter's Fitbit right now, charging. Um, that's a wearable computer. Connecting your phone to a smartwatch, for example. Human thought is input. Well, we're not quite there yet on mainstream, but certainly we're seeing things done, um, you know, to to affect, say, uh, handy capable folks uh, where their brains are used, you know, pulses in their brains are used to move artificial limbs, for example. Certainly, I can use not thought, but voice to send a text. I have the new Google Pixel, so all I have to do is say, listen for the voice here. Okay, Google, send a text to Dawson Magidson. Text Dawson Magidson, sure. What's the message? Hey, son, how did you enjoy your day off? Got it. Do you want to send it or change it? So at that point, what I would do is send, and, and as I was talking, it was typing that on the screen. I would just say, send it, and it would send uh, a message to my son. So, you know, great technology. I remember sitting there watching Star Trek with Captain Kirk would talk to the computer and thinking, wow, that'll never happen in my lifetime, and certainly it has. Uh, controlled robots, you know, that treat and possibly cure cancer. We're seeing great things done, especially in the medical industry as it pertains to the use of computers, um, utilizing supercomputers to give us the results of, you know, combining multiple compounds together, how that might, you know, affect the human body in, in the aspect of curing cancer. Uh, my wife works for Bend Research, and uh, recently this year, actually in 2016, they provided a cure for hepatitis to 150,000 people. Hepatitis used to be a lifelong thing, you know, and now we have a cure. Um, it's just amazing the things that computers are doing and that people who are utilizing computers can solve problems. So data is a collection of raw unprocessed unpro facts, including text, numbers, sound, images, video. Some of you may be aware that for example, Facebook, uh, it's no longer about just the text that you're typing. It's also now about your pictures. You know, so Google is doing this. Um, I can ask my phone, you know, a question like, uh, okay, Google, show me every picture that I have with Dawson. And what it does is it'll do facial recognition on the pictures I've taken in my phone that are in my Google Photos. 
and give me back an album with all the pictures uh, of my son, for example. So just amazing stuff going on there. Software consists of instructions or programs for controlling the computer. The hardware, by the way, is the physical. So you can think about the wires, the transistors, the circuits. That's the hardware. And without an operating system, which is the first piece of software we put on, it's pretty much useless. So data, text, numbers, uh, sounds, images, video, you name it. That's what we're processing today with computing devices. So produces output. That output is known as information. We turn data into information. So I like to think of this as that's my job here as an instructor. You all are the computers. I feed you data, th data like, you know, what the heck is a peripheral, for example. So I give you that data. Your brain, which is the processor in the memory, stores that information. You start processing the data into information. And then, of course, unfortunately, part of this class is going to be that you spit that information back out. I make sure you leave the class with valuable information by quizzing you and giving you exams. So <laughs> peripherals, of course, are things like keyboards, monitors, you know, types of hardware, uh, printers, the microphone that I'm using here, the webcam that I have, you know, are example of peripheral devices, devices that we can connect to a computer to do things like input data or output data. Now, of course, most of you are familiar with the fact that our standard output device today is still a monitor and our standard input devices are the keyboard and the mouse. So, you know, here's a nice example of sort of a standard process. Notice a uh, USB, not a USB, um, a barcode reader that inputs data into a computer. So, you know, that might be a barcode, say, for example, uh, in a grocery store. <laughs> My wife's picking on me. She's got her desk right next to mine and... She's got her three monitors up compared to my two measly monitors. She's a computer nerd as well for Bend Research. So anyway, back. Focus, Eric. Focus. So we process the data. You know, we scan that through whatever input device to an output information. That's going to be the terminal that the person at the grocery store, for example, uses or the terminal where we order our, you know, meal at McDonald's, whatever. All that data then is stored on a hard drive. This is a nice little picture of the inner workings of a standard hard drive as we know it today. So computer literacy, to be computer literate, means that you can use today's computers efficiently to enhance your life and the lives of those around you. Now, the challenge here is that a lot of people, frankly, think they're more computer literate than they are. So one of the key points here is that people that have been using computers, that doesn't necessarily make them computer literate. And what I mean by that is, do you know what's going on inside the computer? You know, back in my day, it was great. I can drive a car, but do I know how a modern combustion engine works and how the car is moving forward, how it breaks, those kind of things. So in this class, we look to narrow that divide by giving you more information both on the hardware that runs computing systems, uh, some of the key software that you'll use in your professional careers, and then we venture out into my favorite module, which is the internet. Um, now, most people don't realize that there's actually two parts of the internet. One is the internet, and one is the World Wide Web. Those two terms are not the same thing. By the end of this class, you'll understand that. So, digital divide, an economic gap between those who are computer literate and have access to computer technology and those who do not. Now, of course, we're trying to narrow that divide, that portion of the divide, by offering uh, computing devices, finding ways to get computing devices into the hands of folks in, say, third world countries. Uh, as part of the cybersecurity that, uh, program that I'm doing right now, I had to read an article how they're using smartphones in Africa to communicate medical information that greatly reduces the spread of disease over there. 
it used to take months to understand there might be a plague or a disease that's, you know, and how do we vaccinate? Now they're able to bring that down literally into hours of understanding that there's a breakout that needs to be contained. And again, using computers and smartphones to get that information out to these small villages that don't necessarily have internet connectivity. So types of software, most of you are familiar with the graphical user interface. You grew up with this, with the icons, the click, the drag, the right click to, um, left click to do, the right click is usually what can I do? So if I right click on my machine here, I can see I can go to the next slide, the previous, go to a slide, pick slides, etc. you know, print, copy, etc. So that's right click, that's what can I do? And then of course the left click is to do what I wanted to do. So I might right click here and say go to the next slide by left clicking. Now some of you may understand that computers actually started without graphical user interfaces. These were called command line interface and we still see a lot of this today. Matter of fact, modern computing uh, like network software, Microsoft Windows Server for example, and Microsoft Windows 10 that you might be using and that we use on campus, we can actually do a lot of things now through a command line interface called PowerShell and I'll briefly introduce that in this class but it's an effective way to not have to do multiple clicks but to create a single program per se a, a single script that can do many things on our computer at one time so command line interface is very efficient the reason we're going back to it is because uh, standardly on a standard graphical user interface uh, computer, whether that be Windows or Mac, 60% of the processing, the memory, the utilization of the video, etc. is being used because of the graphical user interface. So suddenly if we get rid of that GUI, as we call it, computers can run faster. And we're starting to store so much more data, especially on servers and databases, that it's important for them to run as efficiently as possible. So system software and application software. Computer relies on two types of software. System software, the operating system. I wish that's how it was put here. And the application software. So the operating system is the software that coordinates the resources of the hardware in the computer. It knows what processor, how much memory, where to store the data that you input into the computer, uh, how to post it on the screen through the video card, for example. And then of course, other programs, application software, examples, Microsoft Word, which is word processing. Uh, Google has Google Docs. Uh, Google has Google Sheets. Microsoft has Excel. In module two, I'm gonna introduce you all to Excel. It's a wonderful program for storing basic data, and especially for creating things like, um, dare I say it, a budget. So one of the projects that we'll do this term is to create a basic budget for you to have when you leave the class. Utility programs help the operating system set up, maintain, and protect the computer. So, you know, first one that comes to mind would be, for example, virus protection. And um, I think on Thursday, I actually do a lecture where we talk about the fact that a lot of people say, oh, I'm running a Mac, I don't need virus protection. Mac is actually the fastest growing segment of ransomware and viruses because of the fact that people have that idea and I'll show you that information. So always important to have virus protection of some sort. Even I can make a mistake and open the wrong email and execute a program on my computer. So application software like I talked about, we'll talk more about this in detail. These are just sort of the basics or the introduction. You know, writing a report, creating a video. Well, I'm using a piece of software called uh, TechSmith Snagit, which records my screen and records the audio. I can actually then put that into Camtasia and do post-production. I don't need to do that in this case, but you'll watch some of my videos that have been post-produced and put out on YouTube. So, you know, purpose, uh, I would go ahead and pause this and read through this, you know, operating system compared to application software, you know, the role in the computer, et cetera. Operating systems fall into four main categories, personal computers, mobile computing, servers, uh, devices other than computers. So a lot of times on, say for example, your smart 
a TV, if you have a Samsung TV, it probably runs on a version of uh, either Unix or Linux operating systems, most likely an open source. Personal computers are gonna run things like the iOS by Apple, so Mac. Uh, Windows is currently up to Windows 10. Uh, mobile computing devices, well, you have iOS by Mac, you've got Android by Google, you have uh, Windows has a smartphone operating system. Servers uh, will run Unix, Linux, and then Windows Server. And actually, one of the things we're going to do in this class is I'm going to run you across the hall, and we're going to look at our little data center there on campus that uh, our networking students get to use in creating computers with multiple servers on a single physical server to run companies of 165 employees, for example. So personal computer, you know, great for multitasking. Again, we mentioned Windows, Mac, Linux, and the, let's not forget Unix. Two types, one is proprietary and one is open source. So proprietary is gonna be your Apple, your Mac, it's gonna be your Windows, um, Microsoft and Windows. Open source, believe it or not, Android is an open source operating system. And what that means is you can actually get the code and change the operating system to do things you need it to do, for example. Most of you are probably familiar with you know Windows XP in 2001. Then we had Windows 7. Then we had Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. And now we're up to Windows 10. Funny that Windows 10 did not get released in 2010. So... People say, well, what happened to 9? You know, and to that, I just have the stupid joke, well, Windows 8, not, uh, Windows 8, 9 to 10. Anyway, something like that. All right, enough silliness. Uh, of course, Windows became widespread. You know, at, at one point, I think now maybe Apple has about 13% of the worldwide market share in computing. Um, when you talk about smartphones, Android has taken over. It used to be if you had a smartphone, you had an Apple, and, and you went to, to the Apple store, and you got all your apps there. Um, but today it's about Android. 73%, I think, of the market is Android market today. So Windows is easy to use and to personalize, and it runs more types of applications than other operating systems. And the reason for that is because, again, it's the most popular. That's what people are using most. So if you're writing a, a software program, you're going to write it for the most popular so that more people would use it. Mac, you know, OS, OS X, um, you know, standard for GUI operating systems. I got to be honest with you. The Mac GUI, much, much, much easier to use than Windows. You know, one of the examples is I want to get it, uh, uninstall a program. What do I do? Well, I click on it and move it to the trash. With Windows, well, I got to do the control panel and programs and uninstall and then go through, you know, 15 questions of, are you sure you want to uninstall the software? All that good stuff. So it can be pretty annoying. <laughs> uh, Linux, uh, personal computer operating system related to Unix. Operating system's been around since 1960s, frequently used by scientists and programmers. Again, it's command line interface, so CLI. There wasn't the graphical user interface when it started, so it was highly efficient for processing data. Now today, we do have some open source like Ubuntu, which has a graphical user interface. You can actually download Ubuntu from the internet and use it as your operating system on your computer. So Linux released you know, open source software available in versions called distributions, including commercial and non-commercial distributions. What that means is certain distributions of Linux, although it's open source, are managed by companies. One happens to be Red Hat. And so Red Hat is a company who distributes a version of the open source software, but they also support it. So you would pay for it because they support it. So mobile operating systems, most of you are familiar with smartphones and iOS. You may not be familiar with Windows. You might be familiar with RIM. Those were the folks that created the BlackBerry. I think they now have under half a percent of the worldwide market. And then, of course, the Android operating system. We then see touch screens with similar operating systems uh, or tablets uh, with touch screens. So, you know, those would be the iPads. And then, of course, um, you know, Android tablets. Just go to Costco. You'll see all the, all the cool tablets. 
So iOS is a version of Mac written for Apple mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, Google Android for you know types of smartphones and tablets. It's derived from Linux. So again, Google Android is open source. So you can actually download, you know, like Google's Chromium, which is their Chromebook operating system. Um, so you could use that. Now they keep a tighter handle on the on the Chromebook OS. Chromium is a variant of it that you could actually download and I could install on my laptop, for example. Windows Phone, Windows RT, you know, similar to Windows 8, but program for mobile devices. So with those uh, mobile devices. Now, what's interesting is as we see these tablets gain more processing power, gain more memory, um, we're now running full-fledged operating systems instead of customized operating systems that are built for the less powerful hardware. Great example of that, you know, my, my Google phone, I have a Google Pixel XL phone. It's a fairly new phone to the market. It has four gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you don't understand megabytes, gigabytes, don't worry. I got a presentation that'll help you with that. You'll definitely understand it uh, later on in the term. But basically, this, by the way, is how, is twice the amount of RAM that came in the first desktop computers that I started managing as an IT professional. So, you know, it was, and those were like brand new, amazing computers that had two gigabytes of RAM. I actually remember updating computers that had 256 megabytes or 128 megabytes of RAM and we'd update those to a gigabyte and people were thinking, wow, these are amazing. And now my smartphone comes with eight gigabytes of RAM. Let's not confuse RAM with the storage that's available. So like on my phone, there's 128 gigabytes of storage space that I can um, store my pictures, my videos, my data, my programs, etc. All right, I think that's uh, enough for part one. Uh, it's four o'clock. I got to get out. I got to shovel some snow off my roof. Um, did some family members this morning, and I will come back and record the second part of the video. I certainly hope I get to see you all on campus on Thursday, but uh, frankly, as I watch it snow a couple inches um, within the last hour, who knows? But hey, we've got the internet. We can continue to learn. Take care.